I have a sneaking suspicion that the longer I teach this course, I'm going to find more and more videos of things that I like, and then I'm going to retroactively add them into playlists. So sometimes you may see videos in the playlist that I don't ever mention. And if so, I'm telling you now, it's because I found them after the fact when I was originally recording these videos. And who knows, maybe I go back and re-record these videos and change them out too. Let's look at polygony. Uh, polygony is uh, not to be confused with polygamy. Uh, polygony is when one male will mate with more than one female per breeding season. Um, we often see sexual dimorphism in this because there has to be some way for them to per, um, prefer one over the other. There's a couple of different types of polygony that we can deal with. One is resource defense, where the male defends the territory or the resources, and this is what attracts the females. We see this with weaver birds, and we'll put some videos here towards the end in just a second. The female defense is where the females are in a group and the male defends the group of females. We see this a lot in seals, fur seals, leopard seals, elephant seals for sure. There's only a few suitable areas where the females, in order to give birth, they have to get out of the water up on the land. So there's not that many areas on the coast where the seals have their territory that they can do this. So the males will fight for dominance so that he has mating rights with the females. And this is that harem, harem situation that we look at here too. And time the female gives birth and is ready to be mated again, he's right there and he's able to mate with her. So very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very assertive in this, in this very competitive for the males in these situations. It can be a little bit of both of before and we get what's classical territory. So here we have the red winged blackbird which um, you may see around this area as well. We kind of expect polygony when great differences in quality of male territories. But what we find is when we look at this particular chart that the number of other females that share a male's territory, the mean number of young leaving the nest per female, if you look at this, um, like in this case, it could be nine other females sharing one territory of one male. But if it's a good quality enough territory, they're perfectly fine with that. They're having just as many babies, if not more babies, than everybody else. Apparently, the females that are in this scenario are just an amazing territory. And so he's able to support all those females. He does, in this case. And so this is kind of rare in birds. Um, only 14 of the 291 birds in North America are polygonous. Just kind of give you an idea. Again, birds are typically monogamous, but they don't have to be. Just to kind of illustrate this a little bit more, here we have um, a lark bunting. Imagine if you would, if you were a female, where would you choose to go? You Do you want to be in this territory with territory number one with this male? There's a couple other females here, but there's lots of shade. There's berries. There's resources. Or do you want to go over here to territory number two where there's some food, there's some resources. There's really not a whole lot of shade here in this particular area. So if you were a female, where would you prefer to go? Would you prefer to put up with a couple other females and have access to more shade, maybe some more berries and things like that? Or do you want to be monogamous and go over here? So you can kind of see where you can go monogamous, you can go polygonous, and it can fluctuate a little bit here. So let me come back and look at that in a second. Um, reasons... Sorry, talking to myself because my screen flickered. I didn't know if the video flickered too. Reasons for polygony. Um, number one, each individual's average reproductive success will tend to increase. So like we saw the red winged um, on over here. Even though there's multiple females per male, everybody's doing better. In fact, they're doing the best at, at this category than they are anywhere else. They're producing the most offspring. Um, sorry, I'm sliding between slides real quick. Uh, female sacrifices some immediate fitness for long-term survival. So remember, when you have eggs or you brood or you become pregnant, you can't you can't reproduce again until you're done with this clutch, this group, this particular brood. Uh, so safety in numbers. And females prefer to mate in a colony rather than with a peripheral male because it's easy for the male to dominate the group. And sometimes females will become do will try to become dominant and dominate other females. And if they can do that successfully, they'll become monogamous. But if it fails, they'll accept polygamy as well. So again, we've talked about the red deer to some extent. I'm not sure these are exactly red deer, but uh, 
you tend to see some dominance within them as well. So mammals, we often see polygony. Um, don't see it so much in birds. Birds pr tend to prefer uh, monogamy. But why is polygony common? First off, mammals are a lot less mobile than birds. We can't just fly away. Sometimes we have terrain that we have to go around because we're kind of stuck to the earth, as it were. And so it's just easier for a male to dominate. You can't assess the male qualities. They're more likely to stick with the one that's found. If you're herded by the males, again, they can't get away. So that kind of goes back with the mobility situation. There could be predation pressures that are dealing here. And so it's just safety in numbers and kinship. A lot of times it's sisters. It's easier for male to keep together. And so if the sisters, you know, just know each other and want to be together, that kinship, then it's just easier for the males to keep that group together already. And so we see here the greater spear-nosed bat actually practices polygamy as well. And I don't know if this is the male and these are the females or if that's just the way the picture looks, but it's kind of convenient, isn't it? Uh, last couple things before we look at some videos. Uh, male strategy is served by all types of polygamy. And because remember, again, males are going to have many um, more successful matings as this goes. It says uh, the variance in reproductive success is often much higher in males than in females, such that some males have very high reproductive success and off others fare more poorly. So this does give a bigger range. There is a chance you could do worse, but more likely you're going to do well. So this, this polygony is definitely the preference for the male because male strategy says mate and mate often and polygony allows for that female compromises more she has to share the resources that are available to her but you know if, if that's what it is that's what it is so let me show you a couple of different videos here so we get back to seals and their harem harem situation we mentioned the weaver bird so get you to look at the weaver bird i may add some more videos into this but i will see you after the click